Chronic Hoosier stopped by. How are you doing, my friend? Doing well, man. Glad to be back. Uh, glad to have you. Brought to you by Andy Moore Honda Bloomington. Bloomington's number one Honda dealer. Uh, it is a dreary day out there weather-wise, but that's okay. It's a little catch-up. Uh, not a lot going on right now. Kind of a waiting period for a lot for Hoosier fans. Wait, waiting period. Waiting to see what Trace Jackson does. Waiting to see if anything else happens. And I am not expecting anything to happen until that decision is made. No, I would guess uh, that front is probably heating up behind the scenes right now as far as activity is concerned as the uh, the draft draws nearer and the deadlines come and go uh, as far as guys entering into the portal and whatnot. You know, this is the point where, uh, especially as school winds down and it frees up the schedule for a lot of these athletes uh, where they can actually start going and doing some draft evaluations in earnest, getting workouts in front of teams and their personnel and start to, to – to receive the feedback that they're going to need in order to make those choices. And uh, it's it's going to be a fascinating choice. Uh, my buddy Zach Osterman had a great article in the start of the day talking about um, just what a unique case Trace Jackson Davis presents in this new era of NIL for guys that are borderline, that are probably looking at a two-way contract at best, and what the prospects entail with those types of decisions. Um, so it's, it's probably happening right now. Uh, you probably will we'll get little information until the decision's made. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you see some tweets here and there uh, about who's working out where. But, uh, you know, ultimately they, they play the waiting game right now until uh, until the end of the month uh, before they have to, to declare their, their final intention, whether they're going to stay in or whether they're going to remove their name and come back out. So it's going to be an anxious month for the Hoosiers, or at least for Hoosier fans. Uh, but I have a feeling probably – I don't know that it'll go to the deadline. I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of weeks we don't get some indication, though, as far as what the roster is going to look like finally for next season. Yeah, I, uh, I'll i have to find my tweet I sent out like three weeks ago. I fully expect Trace Jackson to be back. That's my opinion on it. But um, he's certainly going to go through everything he can and, and do what's best for him without question. I, I just – Look at the information I look over, which I don't have the information he has. He's got inside information. He's talking to NBA people. Uh, that's obviously something that I do not have. But I, I saw Zach's article, too, and I was I referenced it earlier. Um, I agree. I, and I said that, you know, had this been five years ago, Trey Jackson Davis, there, there wouldn't be a question. He'd be gone. He wouldn't really have a, he wouldn't have a choice. He'd be gone to either play in the G League or to head overseas. Yeah, and that's 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 what NIL gives these guys now. They have the opportunity when it comes down to uh, making a choice whether to go professional or retain their amateur status and stay in school uh, to go get some advice, to go get some feedback. And guys like Trace are exactly who this process uh, or is very much who this process was designed for. And I, I, I think it's been a, a bit of an adjustment period. I remember uh, in years past when the rule first changed and allowed them to at least test the waters, a lot of folks kind of freaked out. And uh, I never really understood that pushback against it. I mean, this is this is a life-changing decision for these guys. And to have the ability to not jeopardize your college el eligibility while still going out and getting expert professional opinions about what their prospects are, what elements of their game uh, they need to work on, what they need to do to improve, uh, or conversely, what, what the NBA loves about them and allowing them to make the most informed decision possible. And I think it's absolutely a win, not just for the players, but for college basketball fans in general, because there's nothing worse. And we've seen it, uh, you know, several times in the past, guys who made the decision, uh, who sacrificed the eligibility only to find out that, uh, all the glitters was not gold. And, you know, they end up, uh, chasing careers overseas and, and, and all the struggles that entails, uh, largely because they uh, maybe they overestimated their potential or in often cases, they just got bad advice. And, you know, the other element to that whole decision process, a lot of times it comes down to financial matters. Now in the NIL era, guys don't have to make that choice. They don't have to sacrifice, you know, the pursuit of their degree or the, op the other opportunities college allows in order to get paid uh, for doing what they love. Now with NIL, as, as we're seeing and will continue to, um, these guys can actually make make a pretty decent living uh, playing college basketball just for being who they are and being able to profit off their name, image, and likeness. So be fascinating to see exactly how this shakes out. I don't know that we'll ever get the full details as far as an accounting 
of what it's going to take to keep a guy like Trace in campus. Uh, but my guess is uh, there's some handsome rewards for him if he chooses to come back to Bloomington for another year. You, you know, in chronic, some kids just don't like school, but Trace doesn't strike me as that kind of kid. I think he enjoys the academic side of it, the campus life side of it. I think that is something that uh, you know he 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 really he really nobody likes, likes the I, academics, man. Come on, nobody wants to go well, to school. I mean, no, I some kids do no, and I, I mean Tracy, he's a well-spoken kid. He's a very intelligent kid, and I think you know, but but I, but listen, there's some kids that aren't like that. I think that factors into it. Another thing, NBA draft combine Chicago May 16th to the 22nd. And uh, I was looking to see if there was a list of invites yet. I haven't seen one, but uh, my guess is Trace will probably be on that list. And he'll, he'll have plenty of workouts, too, as well. well. I mean, how could he not be on the list for, for invites? I mean, he's – I would think anybody projected at any place through the second round would get an invite. I don't know how many they invite, though. Is it like 48 or what's the number? Um, but, yeah, I agree no matter they what. I think down he's in invite. recent years – Shooting yeah, from the hip, I feel like it's like 75, 80, somewhere there about. Oh, then if it's that kind of a number, then then he's without question because he's inside of that number. Uh, any, I've never seen him outside of that number uh, on anything. So he'll definitely get an invite. Uh, but there you go. That's his 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 opportunity. Uh, and but they also that's where they find guys that that they really probably didn't think much of, and uh, that's where a guy that's that's sitting down there in the bottom of that second second day at the moment gets moved up some. So um, how he performs is, you know, that, that, that will determine whether or not he comes back. I guess if he can hit some shots, somebody may decide to take a, a, a shot at him. Just looking last year, it looks like there were 69 invites sent. I, I, I then there's no way he does not get an invite. So there you go. Um, I, I think that he ends up up there, uh, but ultimately I just, I think that he ends up coming back uh, because there are, it's just the opportunity coming back. He's going to make, he would make more money. I, I my prediction, again, this is just me talking. Uh, I, I would say that his NIL deal would probably equal that of Nigel pack, but his would be for one year. Uh, that's, I think that's what it's going to take to get trace Jackson Davis. And I think that whatever it takes to get trace Jackson Davis will be done for Indiana to have that season because of the importance of kicking that, of what that would kick off, Chronic. I, I think that in fans' perspective, in recruiting prospects' perspective, what that would kick off the year Indiana could have, it is more than worth it to Indiana University from a financial standpoint on getting a return on that investment. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, there's big money in, on the line for everybody involved here. Uh, not, not the least of which the school, not the least of which his, uh, his current teammates, you know, um, obviously there's, there's a, a pretty decent talent hall coming on, on the campus here this summer with this recruiting class coming in. But I, uh, you, you may be on something there when you mention the, uh, you know, kind of the pride element of it. There's a reason Trace Jackson Davis committed to Indiana, uh, when Indiana wasn't necessarily, uh, shining in the national spotlight and, you know, for them, and I, I said at the end of this season how important the Big Ten tournament was uh, for them to to be able to play their way into the NCAA tournament and what that meant. But I would imagine there's, especially how it ended in Portland, uh, there's probably an aftertaste and some unfinished business uh, in that locker room. I know we've seen so much expressed by several of the players there, maybe not from Trace himself, but that's something his teammates are certainly uh, being motivated by in the off season. So the opportunity to really see the deal through and get Indiana back uh, to national uh, relevance, prominence, uh, is something that, that was part of the allure to bring him here. And I can only imagine that taste is even stronger now uh, you know, having had the opportunity to dance uh, ever so shortly. But at the end of the day, you know, um, this often comes down to, to kids' hopes and dreams and and how close he, he feels like he is to actually realizing and, and actualizing those dreams. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see where it shakes out. I certainly, uh, you know, if I were a betting man, I would imagine, like yourself, we see him back next year. Uh, but crazier things have happened for sure. 
And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, too, it, it, it would be remiss if we didn't mention the fact that he probably did himself a lot of favor those final two weeks of basketball here. So uh, all it takes is one scout, one GM uh, that sees something that sees a fit within their organization. And, uh, you know, they're making some pretty, uh, pretty compelling pitches as well for guys that they want to get to suit up for them. So uh, it's, it's going to be a tough couple of weeks, uh, but I think we'll get through it just fine. Uh, no matter which way he decides, I think the program is on the right track uh, with or without him. Uh, there's certainly an argument to be made that, uh, you know, eventually Indiana is going to have to progress from such a post dominant uh, style of play if they want to really actualize what what Woody has uh, has foretold of how he wants the program to become. Uh, but I'm with you, man. I think this is a, a much more potent team with him than it is without him. And uh, I would certainly imagine that there is going to be a continued push to retain his services here in Bloomington. And not unlike when we when when we recruit originally, you know, the first go around. One of the benefits to uh, to getting an idea of who's really a player those services is just knowing who you've got to outbid so there's there's a lot of information that's revealing itself to all parties involved right now and uh i think that information is just going to continue to come in and clarify uh here in the coming weeks kevin uh, i i to, to kind of agree what you uh, was talking about earlier I, I do think that he enjoys being a college student he enjoys being uh an indiana university basketball player and i think that there was nothing he would love more than being the guy known as the guy who lit the fire of Indiana's return to prominence, which whether that's true or not, that's kind of how it would be perceived. If he comes back next year, they have a great season. And then that propels from that point forth. Um, so there's a great allure to that, to, I, I don't want to use the word savior. That's a horrible, but, but the the res the resurrector. I mean, it's the the program is sitting here. It's 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 toiling. It's ready to go. You can see it's 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 ready to 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 spring forward, but it just hasn't done it yet. And to be a part of that, to actually be the Pied Piper of that, uh, I think that that would be a very a, a big mark of pride. Not only that, the the additional numbers that he would put up. Uh, would put him into the Indiana Athletics Hall of Fame. Uh, he could potentially end up being uh, the all-time leader in rebounds, blocks, and pretty high on the scoring list. Yeah, I think it would open up a lot of doors for him being an Indiana legend. I agree with that. Um, although, you know, he may be already, and, you know, he's going to have that. Uh, mm. what, he hasn't won anything. Game. can't be a legend if you haven't won anything, man. You know, but he's going to be in the record books in terms of that game in Assembly Hall. But, yeah, no, it's uh, – I, I kind of get it in terms of, uh, you know, you, you know, maybe a cop would be like, right, George McGinnis, right before the Bob Knight era, right? You know, right, who put up big numbers and, um, but, you know, wasn't oh, a part okay. of those. You can't compare teams. George McGinnis now. That's, that's a, he's a basketball god. Yeah. But in terms of just like that, you know, a guy that was a great individual talent that was part of teams you know, during the Lou Watson era that weren't very good. That's that's the cop, not comparing them necessarily to players. But Trace is, uh, you know, he could come back and he could definitely leave a, a different legacy this senior year if they make the tournament again and if they go deeper, which is uh, certainly the hope for Indiana fans with, with the talent that's been accumulated combined with the experiences coming back, that this could be a team that, uh, you know, last year they got a taste. They made the tournament. They had a little bit of a bad draw going from, you know, Dayton to Portland cross country and, didn't have their legs under him in the St. Mary's game. But uh, this year you play for a higher seed, um, a higher finish in the Big Ten. You know, the fact that the fact remains that uh, they haven't finished higher than ninth in Trace's three seasons in the Big Ten. That's what really has to improve so that you can get a better seed and you're not shipped out to Portland. That's that's the real key is that you play the regular season for seeding in the NCAA tournament. And uh, maybe this will be the year with the talent that Indiana is returning combined with what's lost around the league where you can really make hay and, uh, you know, make a, make a run there to be in that uh, top echelon of uh, one of the best conferences in the country. 